Welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. The Pharmacy Leaders Podcast is a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network with interviews and advice on building your professional network, brand, and a purposeful second income from students, residents, and innovative professionals. Hey, d- uh, welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. Dylan Fox is a P3 at Wilkes University, Nesbitt School of Pharmacy, and he recently went down to uh, the state capitol in Pennsylvania to talk with his senators and representatives, and we'll hear about that. But he's also very involved with Generation RX. Uh, we'll talk about opioid awareness, a pain walk, a radio show, Scouts of America and Medwise. And then he was also top 10 in the counseling competition this year, and we'll talk about that. So, Dylan, welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be on the podcast today. So I talked to Cody Morkum and he said, there's this guy that you have to interview, and I couldn't do it at APHA because you were in the midst of competition, uh, and there are rules against that, but now we can kind of talk about everything. Uh, but if somebody doesn't uh, know about Wilkes or know about you, can you tell me a little bit about how you got into pharmacy and then how your pharmacy road is uh, taking you towards um, opioid awareness and those types of things? Absolutely. Yeah. So um, like you said, Cody was on the podcast and uh, well, I'm very fortunate to have a lot of really awesome friends that I've made over the years. I can't believe I've been on campus for five years um, and kind of sad to leave here in a few weeks uh, and go on rotation. But yeah, Wilkes really, I visited a few pharmacy schools. And when I came to Wilkes and I visited, I just had that feeling kind of that this is the place, this is where I want to spend the next five five years uh, in school. So really kind of looked at a few schools and Wilkes was the one. Um, How I chose pharmacy, it's kind of like that same um, (laughs) story of everyone of like, oh, I really, really like the sciences side. But for me, it was the patient interaction side of really uh, a healthcare field that I can interact with people every day Um, and not just one or two, but a lot of people and make a big impact. Um, So and I would say my my passion for pharmacy has really grown over the years of being involved in school and, and being in the curriculum and working in the community setting. Um, five years ago, I didn't have the same passion I do now. So it's really cool to see how that has evolved um, with my passion of pharmacy. And, and I hope that it continues in the future. Well, tell me a little bit about, uh, so obviously, the more the, the senators and representatives are, are on board with provider status and those types of things, what pharmacists can do, uh, whether it becomes a law or not, there's uh, I hate to say there's ways around it, but um, what, what we're doing is we're finding that payers are willing to pay regardless of if we are uh, a, a provider or not. Some payers are. But what is that like? So I just happen to know the senator who's uh, in my area. So I just go and I send a note. I hand it to a guy. That guy hands it to the senator. The senator says yes or no. They let me into his chamber. I talk to him a little bit, take a picture, talk to him about the one or two things I was really uh, believe that he should vote this way on, and that's it. So what was your experience when you went down to the Capitol? Yeah, so it's been, this is my my second year going to, it's called Legislative Day. So the Pennsylvania Pharmacist Association, uh, every year they organize a Legislative Day where it's a really, it's a joint effort between pharmacy students and pharmacists. And um, PPA does a lot of the legwork um, of making the appointments and providing legislative briefings beforehand and and handouts to give to our legislators. So they do all the legwork and make it very, very easy and efficient for us to go. Um, And then so the two bills that we were focusing on, or there's actually three that we talked about, um, really, you've seen in the news, the, the PBMs and all of that that goes into reimbursements for pharmacies. Um, especially independents are being really affected. Um, so we talked about PBMs and and what that how that affects the outlook of pharmacy. Um, what I've really liked to focus on was the immunization. So expanding immunizations in Pennsylvania um, for currently nine years and older can get their flu shot at a pharmacy. Everything else is 18 and older for immunizations. So uh, with pharmacy being super accessible, uh, weekend hours, evening hours, avoiding co-pays for doctor's offices or making an appointment, it would be cool to expand immunizations um, and something like just being trained on immunizations through APHA at Wilkes um, a couple weeks ago. It would be really cool to uh, to be able to immunize. Currently in PA, interns, there's a law passed for interns to immunize. Um, the regulations have not been finalized yet, so we're still eagerly awaiting those. So hopefully in the future, interns can start immunizing as well as have uh, expanded immunizations for um, younger age groups. 
And the last one we focused on was medication synchronization. So having the pharmacist be able to sync all the medications and improve adherence and outcomes for uh, chronic disease management. And all of this saving the taxpayers of Pennsylvania, um, you know, millions of dollars, really, uh, if all of this goes through. And did was there any talk about, so Ohio, which is next door neighbor to the left, and then Kentucky, which is two away from Pennsylvania, both of them have recently had very public uh, PBM, I don't know what the word is, but basically they're like the PBM took an extra $125 million that they didn't need to take because they changed the costs or something like that. Was there any talk about those type of PBM things where uh, really the transparency isn't there? Yeah, so there, the Auditor General is currently still investigating and, and doing kind of compiling all those reports. So as far as the hard data, I'm not completely up to speed with. Uh, really, I think the the pharmacists that were in my group really had a lot more personalized stories and really more of the hard data to talk about uh, because it does affect their day-to-day operations. So for me as a student, I don't see that quite as much. Um, definitely as a pharmacist, I'll, I'll most likely experience that a lot more. Uh, but currently, it, we, it was more on the pharmacist side. Um, and as far as those those hard numbers or the data, I think those are still being worked on and being compiled as to kind of how what the extent is. Okay. And you said you were in, okay, so you were in school for five years. So it's four-year program. So five years uh, in school and then the sixth year you're, you're on yep. rotation. Okay. Yeah. So okay. Wilkes, how Wilkes is set up, it's two years of pre-pharmacy. Um, and then it's a four-year pharmacy program. Um, so two years of pre-pharmacy doing all the, the general education requirements and then three didactic years of classroom um, and experiential learning and then a full year, your sixth year, which is the, the rotation year. So in all different settings, whether it's ambulatory care, um, community, um, institutional, so in a hospital, uh, there's lots of uh, internal medicine. So there's a lot of um, different areas. And then I have a the unique opportunity to attend a global health um, opportunity for an appy. So I will be going to Uganda in October cool. and November. That's so awesome. I'm super looking forward to that. <laughs> okay, cool. We'll talk about that in a minute too. But what I <laughs> what I want to get out of this is um, I went to school for three years and then I did my four years because I just wasn't – I guess my, my question is how do you make it in two years? So – is it a program where you came out of high school going right into six, or is it that you knew right away? How did you get your two years done in two years? That's actually really hard to do. Well, I think it's yeah. hard to do. <laughs> yeah, so Wilkes, Wilkes is, is unique, So, and I can't attest to what other pharmacy schools are set up as, but I can talk um, extensively about how Wilkes, Wilkes works. Um, so they do offer a guaranteed seat program. So I apply to the guaranteed seat program in my um, junior and senior of high school, and I did get um, an offer for a guaranteed seat. So you maintain certain academic requirements for the first two years, and then you are uh, given a seat in okay. pharmacy school. Um, but I have friends who they have a, a bachelor's degree, a four-year degree from another institution, okay. or they came into Wilkes without a guaranteed seat. And then at the, the end of those two years, or for other people who are transferring into Wilkes, after they finish their bachelor's degree, they can apply to pharmacy school because there are um, typically trend-wise, there's always open seats, um, whether it's okay. like I have friends that change their major to genetics or just decide, hey, pharmacy is not for me. And okay. so they, they gave up their guaranteed seat. So there's there's seats that open up and that's when at the end of those two years, so it'd be like our junior year going into our junior year sure. is when you would apply for those open seats or be given your seat to pharmacy school. So it's kind of nice because you don't, it's not a one through six program where you're in year two and you're like, I don't like the systems for me. And you quote, drop out of pharmacy school. Okay. Yeah. Um, you kind of have those two years to like, to you do the, the biology and the chemistry and all the sure. gen eds. Um, and then you kind of see, Hey, is pharmacy still where I want to go with my life? Or uh, maybe, Hey, I, I took one course in this and that's where I want to do. So okay. uh, it kind of gives you that leeway to, to explore different areas and then you can advance into pharmacy school. So it was cool that way. Um, and then for me, I did have a guaranteed seat so I could progress straight in. Okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about what comes outside of pharmacy school, which is, I think, the most uh, interesting part of it. I mean, I'm, you know, pharmacotherapeutics, it's got its place, and so does kinetics and all of that stuff. But once you start getting involved with uh, APHA and then other uh, organizations, 
you find that there's a whole wide world out there, uh, including one that takes you to Seattle, and we'll kind of talk about that. <laughs> so let's first talk about uh, Generation RX for someone that doesn't know what it is. Uh, maybe uh, highlight what that is. I know that it's part of APHA ASP, and then uh, let's go through those four: opioid awareness, pain walk, radio show, and Scouts of America. So let's just start with what's Generation RX to you? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. So Generation RX is something that's near and dear to my heart, and it was actually started at Ohio State University. Um, and really, what it focuses on, in in essence, is safe medication use. So in in opening that uh, safe medication use area, there's a lot of a lot of ways to provide education and resources. Um, so their their website provides resource um, kind of toolkits uh, for every age group. So you can definitely utilize those. Um, we focus a lot here at Wilkes on medication disposal. So um, and on the radio show that we'll talk about a little bit, we actually um, talked about two different. So you can do the the at home medication disposal in a safe and effective way um, that doesn't um, involve like flushing them down the toilet or throwing them in the trash that can end up in the water or the environment and, and provide harmful effects. And then also in the community setting where you can take your, your medication to that's unused, unwanted, or expired, and really just the implications of getting rid of that medication so it's not expired or, or someone accidentally gets into it. Um, so with, with Generation Rx, we kind of expanded upon that here at Wilkes 2, and we talk about um, substance use disorder and naloxone, um, and really just the disposal side and then safe medication use. Okay. So is that part of opioid awareness or is that a different part where you're actually going out to different places and uh, making people aware of the problem, what to do about the problem and those kinds of things? Yeah, so that, that kind of falls under our Generation Rx uh, through APHA. Um, and so what we did was we actually held yeah, an opioid awareness walk. So we um, got t-shirts made and had people sign up and then we did um, a walk through Wilkes-Barre um, with us wearing our t-shirts, kind of a unified um walk for everyone uh, for opioid awareness and really just the effects and the implications and the, all the donations from the event are benefiting the Wilkes-Barre Fire Department right here in our community. Um, that They do have their own naloxone um, or Narcan fund and last year alone they, they administered 311 doses of naloxone to our community. Whoa. So what we're doing is, yeah, so what we're doing is providing funding and support for them that they can continue the um, the work that they're doing with their naloxone program. Okay, and then tell me a little bit about this radio show. How would someone hear it? Uh, where is it? Yeah, so so we are actually in the in the process of officially housing it as a kind of a quote podcast, so a a, a public kind of host for all of our recorded shows. Uh, but every Thursday uh, from nine to nine thirty uh, Eastern Standard Time. We are live on the air, and we bring different topics. We talked about medication disposal, like I said. Uh, we talked about the role of a pharmacist. We talked about student involvement, um, the kind of the extent of the opioid crisis. We talked a, a few, a couple weeks series about naloxone, um, how you can get it, and what it's used for, and, and why it's important. Um, and then we just talked about substance use disorder, and we just started our first week, actually this morning, about um, stigma reduction. So how can we? Um, reduce stigma around substance use and mental health. Uh, so that's where we're currently in our series. So if you want to tune in and listen to it, uh, Thursday mornings from 9 to 9.30 Eastern Standard Time, if you Google WCLH, so that's our, our university radio station that airs on 90.7 FM uh, in the Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, Hazleton area. But you can just Google WCLH Wilkes-Barre, and there is a live um, streaming feed that you can um, access online. So in the future, we're going to host, uh, have an archive and host all of our recorded shows online for the public to listen to as well. So that is coming up in the in the work shortly. Cool. And then tell me a little bit about Scouts of America. Yeah. So that was it's our first year doing that as Generation RX. So the the Scouts of America have it's a it's a newer award, um, and it's called the Medwise Award. So it's not a badge; it's a, an extra award that you can get. And it focuses on over-the-counter and prescription medications and medication safety. So I kind of took that opportunity where, like, who, who better than pharmacy students uh, to to teach about medication safety and tying it into Generation RX? So we had 111 scouts come to campus uh, a couple weeks ago, and they uh, were, it was an awesome time, great experience. Uh, we talked to them about medication safety and over-the-counter medication and when to ask um, an adult or when to ask um, the pharmacist or, or what the pharmacist can do. 
Um, and then we also help them work towards their first aid merit badge. So we taught them um, about naloxone, um, CPR, uh, first aid, um, kind of cuts and, and wound care, um, as well as proper glove technique and first aid kit. So we, it was a, a long whole day event where we had 111 scouts and from a couple different troops throughout the area. So it was a really, really cool opportunity to educate uh, the future uh, on medication use. Cool, cool. All right, well, speaking of education on medication use, uh, tell me a little bit about how you won your school's counseling competition and then what it was like to uh, make the top 10 nationally. So uh, how did you do it? I mean, did you get in the gym? Were you counseling like while you were lifting weights? Like how did, how did, the, how did your counseling preparation work? <laughs> yeah, so I think a lot, a lot of preparation, um, kind of two sides, one or three, three things I guess I could say. One, um, I do like to talk to people, so I think that really helps. Um, two, the support from our dean here at Wilkes University, uh, Dean Stolte, um, as well as our faculty here, um, especially Dr. Pizzino, who's involved in APHA, and Dr. Roke Thomas. Uh, but they, they were huge supporters. Um, I'd actually meet with, with Dean Stolte, and, and the, the professors have like hour-long webcasts or, or talks uh, while our professors were at their site and talk about each medication and kind of what what are some, I call them like the golden nuggets or the golden points of the medications mm -hmm. of kind of what, what can I touch on that maybe other people won't focus on to kind of set myself apart. Um, and the last one is uh, I do work a lot in the community setting. So I think that definitely helps me a lot too. Of uh, Kind of, I go to sit in class from, for a couple hours and, and learn the material and then I'll go work four or five hours at night in the evening and everything I learn in school, I can then apply it in the community setting. So it's really cool to to have that experience and just to, to talk to people uh, on a daily basis almost and, and get to make meaningful impacts in their life. So I think that definitely helps with the counseling side. <laughs> and then tell me a little bit also about uh, Seattle. Uh, so did you go to Seattle because you won the competition or were you going to go anyway? Uh, how did that work? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's actually, I'll, I'll backtrack to, to Nashville. Um, so I, I was the, the Wilkes representative for Nashville uh, in 2018 and that was more the story of, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go. And then it's like, hey, Dylan, you, you won the Wilkes uh, Patient Counseling Competition, so you get to go counsel in Nashville. I was like, <laughs> all right, I'm going to Nashville. So that was more cool. on the last minute side. Uh, but then I realized how amazing APHA was. And even on a national level, the, the, the networking and interactions that you get to have is uh, next to none. So it's really awesome. So I was like, all right, Seattle, I'm definitely going. I'm going to try for the, the counseling competition again, and we'll see where it goes. Uh, but making the, the top 10 in Nashville as well made me a little bit more nervous and more pressure this year um, to go back to Seattle. So Seattle was more of I'm going to plan it out and I'm going to go anyway. And then it was just a, a bonus to get to participate in the counseling competition for a second year and uh, make it to the top 10 once again. Cool. All right. Well, speaking of trips, uh, you're going to be heading out to Uganda as one of your APPEs. And this is something I'm seeing more and more where uh, students of uh, your generation are so much more advanced than they were in mine. Uh, I went to Arizona and Florida as part of my APPEs, and that was my, you know, big travel. Uh, but tell me about uh, going to another country. Uh, first, wh what made you decide to do it? And then how does that really work within the system? Do you have to apply for it? Uh, how, does, how does it work to get to do one of these uh, out-of-country ones? Yeah, so, so Wilkes actually has some cool opportunities. Um, they, they started in Alaska, uh, rotation, um, Uganda, and then some certain years, depending on the logistics and the interest, they have uh, rotations in Peru, focused on kind of the medicinal um, remedies in, in Peru. Um, and then they also have a, a United Kingdom rotation, um, learn about the pharmacy system there. So this year, um, Uganda, so it's a, an application and a, an interview process that goes along because there are only a certain number of um, students that can attend. Um, so it was the, the interview process. And then getting selected as one of six who was able to go is uh, really unique and really cool. Uh, but so we'll, we'll focus on not only teaching the, the pharmacy students there. So there's a pharmacy school in Uganda. We're going to focus on teaching them more clinical skills. So um, in Uganda, they, they focus more on the, the medicine side. They don't focus on uh, blood pressure or blood glucose. So more of those those clinical skills that pharmacists in hmm. in the States can really have a big impact in the disease management. Um, they don't really get to focus on as much. So I'm um, trying to provide support for, for blood pressure cuffs and teaching them skills that even after we leave, 
they'll remain and they can use them. So we don't want to go in and say, hey, we're here for four weeks doing all these things and then we leave uh, for a year and everything stops. So really trying to focus on what impact can we have that will carry on for the future and, and kind of um, elevate them and enable them to make impacts even long after we're gone. Um, and then we also get to focus on clinics, going into clinics, um, both government-run and private uh, clinics, and then also going to like their local community pharmacies. So I'm super excited now. They can even uh, talk more after I get back in November. Uh, but really, the one thing that I'm excited to see and kind of have my eyes open to is in Uganda, there's no uh, kind of regulation on you have to be a pharmacist or a trained professional to run a pharmacy. So anyone can can open up a pharmacy and open up a drugstore and and dispense medications <laughs> um, you don't have to have a training so that's something that uh, i think will be very eye-opening to see how how that works well, we'll definitely have to ba- have you back on um well tell me um uh, i've asked you a ton of questions uh, is there anything else you want to say uh shout outs or uh anything that we haven't covered uh, that you want to make sure we talk about yeah, I would just give a kind of a big shout out to to Wilkes University definitely um, for the experience that I've had here, um, all the friends that I made. I'm like I said, I'm kind of sad to to go on rotations for a year and not have those same group of friends that I sit in class with every day for the past uh, five years. So that'll be a definitely a, a change to make. Um, but just the the relationships and the, the faculty and staff here are outstanding. Um, they're next to none, and just in the the support that they offer, not only in the classroom. But they really have a big emphasis on involvement outside the classroom, which I think is one of the the big reasons why I've had such a great experience here at Wilkes. Um, And then really focusing on the – so I first got involved in our state organization, so PPA, um, which is the Pennsylvania Pharmacists Association. And that kind of segued into the APHA of joining the national organization. And it's really cool to to have both sides of the the really – the big national organization where you have all these immense connections to make. Um, and networking and the opportunities that that provides, but then really the the more kind of close knit uh, kind of uh, smaller state organization that you also get to make those meaningful connections and network with. Um, so, and this year I actually have the opportunity to sit on the board of directors for PPA um, as a student director. So learning more about how that works and everything that goes into managing a state organization is really cool. And and one big shout out for PPA too is. Uh, I don't know if you heard of the the Pennsylvania Pharmacist Care Network, Mm -mm. but what that is is a a clinically integrated enhanced services network. So um, PPCN is kind of one of the the leaders in the nation, too, um, within CPESN and really um, making those contracts like we were talking about in the beginning of formulating those payer contracts to have pharmacists make those um, either targeted uh, clinical interventions or um, just any meaningful clinical intervention and they can then document those and bill for their services. So it's still kind of, I wouldn't say in its infancy, it's been around for a number of years, but really the hardest part is is getting those contracts without um, kind of, but it is cool because they're getting those contracts without the provider status of pharmacists. So it's something that's really cool and I look forward to how that progresses, uh, but really showing what pharmacists can do, uh, managing diabetes and preventing hospitalizations uh, for COPD exacerbations or um, maintaining adherence or compliance through uh, kind of patient-oriented or patient-specific uh, adherence packaging. So a lot of cool things that are going on in PA. So I'm just excited to kind of be a part of it and see everything that's going on. Cool. Well, Dylan Fox, thanks so much for being on the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. It was a pleasure. Support for this episode comes from the audiobook Memorizing Pharmacology, a relaxed approach. With over 9,000 sales in the United States, United Kingdom, and Australia, it's the go-to resource to ease the pharmacology challenge. Available on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon.com. In print, ebook, and audiobook. Thank you for listening to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. Be sure to share the show with the hashtag HashPharmacyLeaders. Leaders. 